Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church of Hope Mills. Pleased to have you with us this morning. Those that are joining us with us here in the sanctuary as well as those that are joining us over live stream. This being Memorial Day, uh, I'd just like to say one word or two if I may. There's a, this is a special weekend and there's a lot of people that doesn't understand the complexity of what this weekend means. Uh, there's a lot of us in here that has served in the military, and we've paid many, many sacrifices. But the thing of it is, we were able to come back and tell our families about the sacrifices that we've made and the pain and, and the heartaches that we endured through our service life. But the, this weekend are, is for those that was not able to do that. They were come back in caskets or they come back that, uh, uh, as vegetables, not able to live a, a full and happy life. But this is what this weekend is for, is those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. And that was to give their life for this country that we, I am proud of. I'll, I'll put it that way. I'm proud to, to have served my country but this weekend is for those that paid the ultimate price. And when someone says to me, thank you for your service, I don't deserve that. I did what I was supposed to do as an American citizen. I participated in the, in the welfare of my country. And that was my job and that was my duty. And I don't need to be thanked for that. That was my God's calling and that's what I did. Amen. The ones that paid the sacrifice, those are the ones that need to be thanked because they gave their life for us to have the freedom to come into this sanctuary and to openly share our thoughts and our feelings with God. A lot of people can't do that in other parts of this world. So at any rate, this is what this weekend is for. So please keep those folks in your hearts and prayers this weekend because those are the ones that paid the big sacrifice. Now we'll be reading this morning from uh, Psalms, chapter 27, verses 1 through 4, NIV version. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my, the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advanced against me, devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple." Now, Pastor Harrison will open with our invocation. Um, before we pray, let me just give you a couple of updates on some individuals who've been sick. The uh, Herbert Scott is a uh, uh, share with us having to send them thank you for your prayers surgery that he had on <clears throat> last Wednesday it was miraculous. And all the anticipating, uh, what they anticipated to happen afterward, never surfaced because the surgery went so well. So they want, she wants to thank you for your prayers, but he's also still in our prayers for he had to be rushed back into ICU. Also, Emily Perry, update on her. Her next uh, chemo, the last one is June the 7th. The first two chemo gave us some, some discomfort, but she's done well and she's doing well. So I talked with uh, uh, Terry yesterday and she said that uh, to keep her in your prayers that she anticipated that she would go through this uh, last chemo. And after that chemo, then we will be able to determine. I don't have, I don't have to. Can you hear me? Okay, good. But anyway, um, the last chemo, the doctor will decide with the family uh, where things are and where they'll go from there. So keep them in your prayers. And also, Ryan, he 
be doing a lot better. Uh, we pray for his uh, Ryan uh, Blackwell and uh, anyone else that have prayers that have been offered, we pray for them as well. So will you go with me in prayer as we bow out the word and pray as we remember these ones today? <clears throat> oh God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, for this beautiful day, a day that you have brought us together to worship and to give praise and to acknowledge your presence, to acknowledge that you are God Almighty. There is no God besides you. Not only did you create the world and the earth and everything in it and all who belongs to it, but you also created the universe itself. Even the universe itself is your footstool. You are great and awesome God, cannot be found. No one can understand who you are. You display your glory and your mercy daily. Lord, we bow before you. We humble ourselves before you because we know that in ourselves we are not worthy to receive the grace and the love that you have given us through your Son, Jesus. So we ask you, Lord, to receive us in this worship. We pray for those that are healed, that need our healing, that's the name that I've already mentioned these individuals. We pray that you touch them. We pray for those that may be watching who are sick and those that are going through uh, trials of any kind of battle of addiction or whatever it may be, Lord. May they find healing in your name today. We pray for them. And Lord, we remember that our men and women and those that serve our country, those in harm ways and those that are serving in peacetime. We ask your blessing upon them. And we pray for their religious leaders and religious chaplains throughout the military of all forces. We ask for your blessings upon them, O oh Lord. Father God, we pray again as we lift up those who grieve the loss of loved ones. As already been said about, uh, mentioned about the those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, there is still a void there. There is still an emptiness there. And Lord, we pray that only you can fill that emptiness by your confidence, by your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you give each of these individuals and those that made that sacrifice for us, and even those of us who served, we didn't make that kind of sacrifice. So we ask you, Lord, to bless them and comfort all those who mourn right now. We pray for our country as a whole. We pray for those uh, that in Iran and uh, 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 Ukraine and, and the refugees that all over the world, not just on the border, but throughout the world, there are refugees trying to find places to, to, to feed their families and to be cared for. We pray, Lord, that not only that you send help, but that we be a part of that help in some form or fashion. Lord, we ask your blessing. We pray for our leadership. We pray for our church family. We give you praise. We ask you to bless this service and all who's in attendance and those that are listening. We pray for you too, my friend, that the day of the day will be the day that the Lord bless you and that you be healed and that you be blessed in every fashion. We thank you, Lord, and we pray this prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen.
You may be seated. Do we have any visitors with us here today? Yes, not everyone's here. Everyone's familiar. Good to have you anyway. If you would, please stand and let's uh, recite our verse of the month. And that is Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34. Please recite, recite after me. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Amen. You may stand or be seated as we sing our song of praises. I'm sorry again. Bless me and greet. Now we'll hear from our praise team.
First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And in the army eagles rolling the law. Pride of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army eagles rolling.
always good to have uh, one of our chaplains, active duty chaplains. Uh, know what it's like to be with the troops and their families and the suffering that they go through. And there to spread, to, uh, to be able to be there with them in hard times when they, they have to go there and help deliver the news that things haven't gone well, gone well with the loved ones. So we are blessed to have that connection. And, and our brother Jason here, and, and we, we meet sometimes with this fellowship, and, and Pernell Bread is one of our favorite places we meet and have prayer and fellowship. So, uh, we are blessed to have him as our speaker today, and I thank you for our church for receiving him, okay? So let's give him a, a welcome, welcome. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. It is always good to be here, and um, Pastor Harrison, thank you for inviting me back. <laughs> you haven't told me not to come back yet, so I guess I keep coming back. Uh, another thing I notice is that it just so happens every Memorial Day weekend, I think I find myself here. <laughs> that might, I think that's on purpose. Yeah, next year, <laughs> Lord willing, next year Memorial Day, I'll be back. And then hopefully Christmas time as well. Advent season, I, I find my way back here as well. So it's a blessing to be here. I feel like it's another home for me. Um, it's just a, it's wonderful to be among God's people and uh, here at First Baptist Church of Hope Mills, it, it really is. It's fun, and uh, it's it's great to bring the the word of the Lord to you. I want to say something about your pastor. He is a man of prayer. If you didn't know that already, um, the more and more I know him, the more I realize he is a man of prayer. He texts me about every, maybe once a month, or maybe once a week sometimes, or twice a week, and says, I'm praying for you. And for whatever reason, the Lord knows who to bring to his heart at the right time to pray for. Um, so know that he's praying for you. What a wonderful gift that is as a pastor, as a church, to have a pastor who prays for you. If you look in Acts chapter 6, it's not where we're going to be this morning, but in Acts chapter 6, right, the apostles, okay, the, 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 the founders of the church that, that Jesus had appointed to found the church, they had been so busy giving food to the widows. And, they, and, and so they eventually said, we need you, church, to call out men who would be essentially deacons or servants of the church to, to deal with those, those needs, the day-to-day -day needs of giving food to the widows especially, but a lot of the other things. Why? Because we need to give ourselves to the ministry of the Word Amen. and to prayer. And your pastor does that week in and week out, week out. He devotes himself to the Word and to prayer. And that prayer is for you. So that's a wonderful gift. Uh, as a church, to have a man like that. So thank you for doing that for this church. I know your church appreciates it, and I just want to uplift your pastor this morning. So praise God for him. Um, let's go to Luke chapter 7. That's where I want <clears throat> to open up today. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 50. Um, if you're new to the Scriptures, the book of Luke is one of the four Gospels, Math, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're the first four books in the New Testament, so you can look in your uh, table of contents or uh, in, in, in your book and, and uh, you, in your Bible, sorry, and you can find out where that, where that is. Beginning in verse 36, and I'm just going to read verse 36 through 38. One of the Pharisees asked him, that is Jesus, to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Father, we thank You for Your Word this morning. We ask that You would speak to us through it this morning. Use my mouth. Whatever words come from me, I pray they would fall on deaf ears, but I pray that the words that come from You would be heard. Open our ears. Thank you, Lord. Open our eyes. Just as we just sang, Lord, open up the, the ears of our heart to hear from You because we need to hear a thank word from you, you. Speak to us now. Lord, through your Holy Spirit, bless our hearts today, and may we not leave here unchanged. Lord, we thank you.
for this morning. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, if you've been paying attention to the news in recent months, you know that there's been a lot of discussion, debate, and concern about financial, our finances as a nation, right? A couple months ago, we had a few banks that collapsed. They, 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 they didn't have enough money to pay the people back, so there was a run on the bank, right? And, and, and those people who held accounts in their banks, they couldn't get their, their, their cash, right? So the government had to guarantee um, their accounts and to, to give them the money that, that they had there. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but there's been a lot of debate at the national level as to how much should we be able to, how much should the government be able to spend? And then how much then should our country be able to go into debt, right? What, what level of debt should we have? Is there, what, what is our debt ceiling? And on top of all that, we're dealing with inflation, although I did hear maybe some good news that inflation might be going down a little bit, so um, that, that's some good news I just heard this week, right? But gas prices are high, right? Food prices are high. And, and we have to be concerned about our own debts and our own mortgages. And so just as much as our nation is concerned about financially, a big picture as our country, we're also wondering, okay, how do we pay our own bills, yes. right? And my reason for bringing this up is, is not to debate, I'm here to try to give one side or the other as to why this is a better, better way of looking at it or that's a better way of looking at it. My, my, my reason is not, also not to make us concerned, okay? Because we could think about our own bank accounts, we could think about how much more we're spending on food and gas and be concerned about those things. But one thing that David says in Psalm 37, 25, he says, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. The Lord knows how to take care of his children. So my point is not to make us concerned. In fact, it is to give us more confidence in who he is. He owns a cattle on a thousand. Thank you, Lord. And yet in times like this, God invites us to consider spiritual concerns. As we consider worldly concerns. And if we do not have ears to hear, we may miss what God wants to speak to us today. As we consider what, it, what happens when someone cannot pay their financial debts, just as the banks did a few months ago that collapsed, and now our government considering, can we pay? financial debts, as we consider what happens when someone cannot pay their financial debts, we also ought to consider what happens when someone cannot pay their spiritual debts. Big question for us this morning. What happens when someone cannot pay their debt to God? What happens when someone cannot pay their spiritual debt I want to suggest to you this morning through the text that we're going to look at, we're going to go on into the the next verses. We won't just stick with the first few verses. But I want to suggest to you these things. If you'd like to take notes, you can write this down as a big idea. Listen to what I want to, listen to this. In God's economy of righteousness, okay, in God's economy of righteousness, everyone is a debtor in need of debt forgiveness no matter the size of the debt. Did you guys hear that? So in God's economy of righteousness, no matter who you are, all of us here, seated here, are debtors in need of our debts to be forgiven. It doesn't matter how much that debt is, right? It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're very young and you're four years old and you've got just uh, 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 you know, one, one page worth of debt, or you're, you're 80 years old and you got 50 pages worth of debt, right? If we could, if we could take record of it in that way. I don't think that, that we, we should, but if we were to look at it in that way, every single one of us, right, no matter how small or how large our debt, we are debtors in God's economy of righteousness. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we need our debts to be forgiven. And, and the follow-on question to that is this. Do you believe that about yourself? Do you believe that about yourself? Now, ask yourself that honestly, because let's just be honest with ourselves. Sometimes maybe we think we have a little 
I got a dollar here. I got 10 here. I got 20. Maybe I got a 50 or maybe $100. I, I can add a little bit to my account. But let me say this clearly. Let me just give you the bottom line up front. If you get to this judgment seat of Christ, you think and you think that you have something to offer in your own righteousness, you will be surprised because you will be found lacking. We do not have anything. We do not have anything that we can add to the righteousness of Christ. We do not have anything to bring to Christ. We are completely morally in debt to God. And we need our debts forgiven. So today we're going to look at two perspectives on this, right? And the two perspectives come from the two Two of the characters in the text that we've already seen, it's the, 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 the Pharisee Simon and the woman who comes to this, uh, to this dinner that they're having with Jesus. And we're going to look at how they view themselves. What do they think about themselves? And, and how does Jesus interact with them? What does He say to them based on their actions he reveals to them their heart condition. Yes. And that's what we're going to look at today. So two perspectives, our big idea, which we already, uh, we already talked about. And then the first perspective we'll look at is that of the woman. The second will be that of Simon the Pharisee. So the first perspective is this. That is the perspective of the complete debtor. The one who is in debt. The one who owes completely everything. And that comes from the woman and how she views herself. So we look at verse 36, and we read that Jesus was invited to the house of a Pharisee whose name was Simon, and they're reclining at table. Now, back in those days, right, the table might have been a little bit off the ground, and you might have had cushions to, to lay on, and, and you would have leaned over, like, you know, just imagine if you're in your lazy boy, okay, in your recliner, and you're reclining at table, and you might pick off some food, and you might eat it with your hands, and that's how they would do it around a, uh, around a big table. Everybody's kind of leaning forward into the table uh, with their feet kind of behind them. Okay, so that's what they're doing at this table. And in verse 37, we get a surprise. A woman shows up who was not invited. Listen to what it says about her. Verse 37, Behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair and her head, with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Clearly this woman is broken. She's known to be a sinner. What does that mean? Well, she probably slept around. We'll just say that. She might have been a prostitute. She might have used that what she did as a way of money. Um, we don't know, but she was a woman of the city who was known to be a sinner. And that is the Bible's way of saying that she was doing some pretty bad things. Either way, whether she liked to move around from house to house or do that as a way of money, we don't know. She was known. It was known who she was. And here she comes to Jesus and she's weeping. She's broken inside. And then she cleans Jesus' feet with her, with her tears. She wipes them with her hair. Just kind of imagine the picture, right? She's got long hair and she's weeping over His feet. She's standing back here behind Him and, and the tears are just flowing and they're flowing onto His feet and she, all she can do is wipe them with her hair. And then she takes this anointment, probably this ointment, and probably expensive, um, but, but she gives it as a gift. She breaks it, and then she, she opens it up, and she puts it on so that, so that his, his skin, it's like giving a gift to his skin. Back in those days, you think about just being in a dry climate, and you're walking around, your feet are dusty and dirty, and you go into somebody's house, and they would give you some water, you clean your feet, they would be refreshed, and, and then maybe a little bit of ointment, maybe a little bit of ointment on your skin to just to, to, to make you, to, to rejuvenate your skin. We'll just say that. That was kind of the customs of, the, of those days. And so she's, she's doing this thing as a gift to Jesus, and she uh, anoints his feet with this ointment. And Luke sets us up to understand that the very thing she is broken about is the very thing she is known for. 
her sinful lifestyle. She is in great debt because of the sinful choices she has in her life. And that is the first perspective that we have. She sees herself as a complete debtor. Jesus will explain a little bit more uh, in the verses to follow, but she sees herself as a complete debtor in God's economy of righteousness. Now let's move on to the second perspective, and that is that of Simon the Pharisee who sees himself as the creditor. Okay, So that's the second perspective, the creditor, the one who believes that he has something to bring. Let's go move on into verse 39. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. For she's a sinner. And Jesus answering him, answering, said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain moneylender who had two debtors one owed, one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins teacher speaks, we ought to listen. (laughs) Jesus tells him of this tale of two debtors. We call it a parable, right, in the Scriptures. It's it's kind of a story that is, it's made up. It's, It's not necessarily a true story. It could be true. It could happen in real life. Uh, But it, but it's relatable because it could happen. And Jesus tells the story, this tale of two debtors. And one of them owed him 500 denarii. Okay, 500 denarii is 20 months worth of wages. So just think of that. A year and a half of your work, that's how much, over a year and a half of your work, that's how much 500 denarii is. And then the other owed 50 denarii. That's two months worth. Okay, they're, they're not insignificant. Both are, are significant uh, sums of money. Two worse is, is a good bit. Five, or, or in um, 18 months or 20 months is, is quite a bit as well. But both couldn't pay. Both couldn't pay, and the lender canceled the debt of both. And so Jesus turns to him and says, Simon, if this happened in real life, who do you think would love the money lender more? Simon gives him the right answer. Of course, the one who is forgiven the most debt. And Jesus Jesus takes this parable and he relates it to the situation that is right in front of his eyes. He says, you see this woman? She gave me hospitality. She came to me. She did everything that you didn't actually do. As a, I'm a guest in your house. We have, you know, we have certain customs in our in our culture. Not not as great probably as this, right? You know, hey, would you like something to drink or would you like to sit down? That kind of thing. But you know, those customs, right? Simon had failed to do those things, but this woman, she probably didn't even realize that's what she was doing. But she wanted to give a gift to Jesus because of her love for him. And she anoints him, she cleans his feet, she kisses his feet out of respect for him. And he says, Simon, you have failed to do all this. Who do you think loves me the most? She, by her hospitality to me, by what she has done, her respect and her care for me has shown me she loves. Now make, make no mistake about it. Jesus does not ignore her sin. If we look at verse 47, he, he, he tells them, he tells Simon, and he tells us that her sins are many. 
but because of her humility. How lowly she saw herself because of, uh, 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 of her own sinfulness. And because of her faith, as we see in verse 50, faith that is not in herself, but it is in, it is in Jesus. Jesus says to her, your sins are It's not that she doesn't have any sin, but it's that her sins are forgiven. We read in verse 48 again, and he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you, O You see, there are two debtors in this story. And Simon is surprised to find out that he is actually one of them. You have two perspectives, right? You have the one who knows, she knows she is a debtor, completely a debtor. And then you have this other one who thinks, I've got a little something to add to this. Two debtors in the story though. Simon is surprised to find out that he is one of them. He is not a creditor. He may have seemed to make wise investments with his money, with his morality. He may have seemed to have it all together, but when the, the accounts are settled, he comes up short. There is not enough. Simon had an account with God. He thought he was doing well. He thought he had something to bring. Maybe he wasn't perfect, but here he is. He finds out, according to Jesus, he has, he has no credit with God. He is still in debt in need of forgiveness. And here is the thing I want to ask you this morning. Once again, Which one are you? Ask yourself this question. Who do you see yourself as? How do you view yourself? Because it's so easy for us. In our day and age, and we do have a lot of freedoms, thankfully, to be in a church, to drive down the street, and there's many churches to choose from. And we can come and we can love and enjoy the sense of community and we can hear some great songs and great Preaching and all those things, right? And at the end of the day, still think that we have something to bring. But at the end of the day, we have nothing. Because if you're in debt, you're still in debt. You're still in debt. It's not like we might, you know, in our culture, manage debt. Like you might have $100,000 and then you take out $50,000 to pay for something. Well, you still have the $100,000 to, you could cover that $50,000 that you just borrowed. No. That's not how it works in God's economy of righteousness. If you're in debt, you are in debt. If you have sinned, then you are in debt. We cannot move away from Genesis 1, 2, and 3, where God clearly says to them, the first man and woman, the day that you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. You deserve to die. You deserve eternal judgment. You deserve hell. Jesus does not shy away from hell. And I hope as a preacher, I hope as pastors, we do not shy away from hell. And I hope you do not either because hell is real. And there is a consequence for sin. But there is forgiveness. As we see here in this passage. Wonderful, wonderful truth. And I hope that you would not leave this place thinking that you are a creditor, but understanding you are indebted, you are indebted to God and you deserve His forgiveness. If the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, I, I haven't been that bad. I haven't, I haven't done anything that bad. Then beware. Beware, right? Do you hear that a lot? I hear that a lot from a younger generation and I, I meet a lot of younger soldiers. That's a privilege, I guess, as a chaplain. I meet the 20-somethings and, and, and up, and, and uh, some, some are still in their teens, we'll say that, they're 18, 19 years old, and I hear a lot, well, I'm not, I haven't done anything that bad, and what they mean is, I haven't killed anybody, I haven't, you know, I haven't burned anybody's house down, right, you know, and, and like, maybe I, I've told a lie, but 
Do you guys see what I'm saying here, right? How easy it is though for us to fall in that same trap. I haven't done anything that bad. Beware. If that's what's going on in your mind, beware. Because that's not God's economy of righteousness. The wages of sin is death and we deserve hell for our sin. No one is righteous. No, not one. If we find ourselves thinking, well, get this, why? If you find yourself thinking, why did she come to church again? She just doesn't get it. I, I don't think there's any hope for her. You see that kind of thinking? When we start to look to the person across the aisle, across you or wherever it may be. And maybe they're even in your own family. And you start to think, well, she just doesn't get up. There's no hope for her. Then beware. Because you don't understand the grace of God. We reveal more about our own sinfulness by the way we judge others for theirs. We spend more time trying to justify ourselves by judging others when we should be judging ourselves. And that's what we ought to be doing. That's what this text calls us to do this morning. To examine ourselves, to examine our own sinfulness before we would examine somebody else for their other sin. Now, within the context of the church, there is that a part we play as a body of believers to help each other out with their sins, right? To bear one another's burdens, to call people out in their sin. But we ought to examine ourselves first. Before we start thinking, who has credit and who has debt? If you start thinking in that way, beware, because that is not how it works. Open your eyes to see what's in front of you. You and I are debtors. You and I are debtors, and we will fall into the same trap as Simon did when we start to think that way. Jesus knows your heart Jesus knew the heart of Simon. He knew what he was thinking. In verse 39, right, Simon is just thinking to himself, right? He, 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 it says, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who, is, who this sort of woman this is, who's touching him. He's just thinking this thought to himself, and guess what? Jesus answers his thought, right? Jesus knows what's going on in his heart. How amazing is that? That ought to expose to Simon right away as he's thinking to himself. And then Jesus is like, Simon, I've got something to say to you. <laughs> right? Wow. Jesus knows his heart. He is more, much more than a prophet. We'll just say that. Jesus knew the woman's heart as well. Did you notice in this whole passage that we just read together? The woman says nothing. She says nothing. And Jesus knows her heart. He knows what's going on. And he says in verse 50, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I want to hear that said of me someday. Do you want to hear that said? And when we put our faith in him, he does say that. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. There will be a day when we meet him face to face. Yeah. And we will have that perfect, complete peace finally. But he says that to a woman who has said nothing to him. That ought to challenge what we, the way we might even think about praying a, a certain prayer, right? You might come forward and you might have recited a prayer. If your heart was not in that prayer, has he really saved you? And let me say this, if you never came forward and prayed a prayer like that, but your heart is trusting in Jesus to save you from your sin, He can save you that way too. Amen. As a pastor, I used to tell people, hey, you can come forward, you can stay in your seat, you can trust in Jesus right now, in the seat you're seated in, right now, and be saved now. He knows your heart. He is much more than a prophet. So there is, there's two ways to look at yourself in God's economy, right? And, and we'll just kind of recap what they are, right? The, 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 the creditor and the debtor. You can see yourself as not that bad, right? You can see yourself as a creditor. I'm not that bad. Maybe I need a little bit of help from time to time. Hey, nobody's perfect, right? That's another one that we hear. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure Simon also probably thought, excuse me, of himself as like, 
Nobody's perfect, but you know, hey, I'm, I do, I'm mostly good most of the time. I'm adding credit to my account. Did you notice what that did for Simon? Jesus never tells Simon, your sins are forgiven. And to this day, we still don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I, I don't think we hear about Simon in any other passage. Simon the Pharisee is only listed, I think, in this one passage. <laughs> to this day, we don't know if he believed or did not believe. He still had time. And hopefully he did repent, believed what Jesus had opened him up to see. But Jesus never tells him, your sins are forgiven. The other way that we can look at ourselves is this. When we think about our sin, it causes us to weep because we know we are unworthy. And we fall at Jesus' feet broken because we know we are debtors. And, and, and the, the longer I live, and I know some of you will live longer than me, um, the more I realize this, it's an ongoing thing, right? We just continue to fall down at his feet. Yes. You can keep preaching when I'm done, okay? <laughs> we may owe 50 denarii or 500. But the point is that in our heart of hearts, we know that we have a debt that we cannot pay, and we need forgiveness. How you see yourself is a matter of life and death. How you see yourself is a matter of eternal life and eternal death. Do you see yourself as good in any way or completely in debt to God because of your sin? Simon came to Jesus as a good teacher. Right? He calls him teacher. He says, Say it, teacher, right? He thought maybe this guy's a prophet. He thought of himself as worthy to have Jesus in his home, right? But didn't even wash his feet or anoint him with oil or give him a kiss of greeting. It's like, that's like refusing to say, shake somebody's hand. Simon saw himself that way, but the woman saw Jesus as Savior. She, she came to him completely broken. That's how we have to come yes. to him. So I ask you this morning again, which one are you? How do you see yourself in light of God's righteousness? In His economy of righteousness, how do you see yourself? There is more to this story, actually. And we're going to, we're going to wrap up the sermon, okay? But there is more to this story than what we have talked about. And maybe what's even more important is not how they see themselves, but how they see Jesus. And Lord willing, in two weeks, I'll come back June 11th, and that's what we're going to talk about. How they see Jesus is just as important as how they see themselves. They go hand in hand. So Lord willing, in a couple of weeks, I'll come back and we'll look at that. But I want to leave you with this. I just want to say, first of all, know this, that Jesus is incredibly compassionate when you come to Him with humility and faith, He will receive you. I mean, this woman, we don't even know the list of her sins, right? But she was known as a sinner. She had that label where others didn't, even though they were sinners. But in that culture, she was labeled a sinner. And she came to Jesus in humility and faith, and Jesus forgave her. You may feel like the sinful woman today, who hasn't lived the way that you know you should, but think about this, that Jesus did not push her away. He let her touch His feet. Simon thought, get away. Get away. But no, Jesus welcomes that. And He says, your sins are forgiven. Think about that, how Jesus did not push her away. She came to Him in faith, and He forgave her. Praise God for that. I'm just going to tell you, it doesn't matter what sin you've committed or com sins you have committed, you can come to Christ and be saved. And you can do that today. Today can be the day of salvation for you. Go and tell your friends, right? 
Go and tell your friends. We don't know where she went from there, but I'm sure she told her friends about this too. And her life was changed after this day. Completely changed. Never to be the same. Here's the other thing. You may feel like there's been a run on the bank today. Okay, God has come to settle accounts, and spiritually speaking, you cannot pay your debts. It will do you no good to look to the person next to you and say, well, at least I ain't as bad as him. Right? <laughs> you don't have anybody sitting next to you, so you, just, <laughs> you can point to me. <laughs> it, will do you no, it will do you no good. And my point this morning is that as much as I've been challenged by this, I hope you have been challenged by it as well, that we cannot think about this. There is a man, and the president of the seminary I went to in Louisville, Kentucky, Southern Baptist Seminary, right? Man, I deeply respect and, and love, and today I, I listen to him every day because he does podcasts, and it, he was being honest with us one day, and he said, I was going to church, I was dressed up, and I looked over at this family over here, and I said, that was at McDonald's or something like that. And I said, well, I bet they're not going to church. How easily, and I appreciated him being honest with us. President of a well-known man who's just being honest about his own sinful pride that we can so easily judge the other person and think that, man, well, I got something to bring. At the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. So we ought to look to him. Because he's the only one who can pay that debt, right? The only one. I forget how many times I preached here. It was a couple of times I preached here. I noticed that cross up there. It's beautiful by the display of crosses, right? It's a reminder, right? Two of the people up there deserve to be up there. One did not. One did not. That man was Jesus. You realize he came on a mission to earth to be born of a woman, God being born in human flesh, to take on a human body so that the day would come where He could take on a human death to pay the price for humans, right? He had to become man to pay for the price of humanity. That's why Jesus came. And He did that. He he went to the cross. And when He When he gave up his spirit, he said, it is finished. What was finished? His assignment. And his assignment was paying in full the debt that every single one of us owed. Every single one of us, I'll say that with faith. If you have faith, he has paid your debts. That's why he went. He rose again on the third day, proving that he could conquer death and proving also that the day will come when those of us in Christ will rise from the dead. Our bodies will be completely restored. I imagine we won't have any more gray hair or wrinkles and we're going to just be hopping and skipping all the time. And it's just going to be it's going to be great. We're going to experience life as it was always intended to be. Jesus died to do that. So. If this morning you have found that your account is lacking for the first time, I know some of you know that already, for the first time, let today be the day of salvation. Come to Christ in faith, and that's all that's required, is to trust in Him. To trust in Him. I believe we read that in Psalm 27 this morning. To trust in Jesus and all of the credit of His righteousness, His righteous life is given to you. And you go free. He paid your debt. He paid it in full. Trust in Him. Trust in Him for your life, for your sins, for everything. And know this, there was still time for Simon to come to faith. We do not know if he did. But there is still time for you today as well. But do not let the day go by without settling this account with the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit devised a plan for us to be redeemed, for our debts to be forgiven. 
We thank you that we can come to this word and time and time again we see the same message. That is that we are debtors to you and that we need your forgiveness. And the only way we can be forgiven is through Christ. I pray for um, those here who do not yet know you, who are just curious. May you call them to yourself. Draw them to yourself and say, hey, I have got everything you need to pay this debt. Just believe me. And I pray for those here, those of us who have known you, who are, have been trusting in you. May we continue to come to you like this woman who came weeping over her sin. But let us leave also knowing what she knew, and that was that her sins were forgiven. Lord, we pray for the children in this church that they would grow up knowing who you are. That they would hear from their parents, from those in this church, that you are a loving God. That you pay the price for our sins. May they hear those things and delight themselves in you. May we not leave this place unchanged, Lord. May we take account of our own lives and come to you for all that we need. We love you, Lord. And we pray this in your name. Amen. As the choir comes and sings today, anybody today, as you heard that message, plain and simple. Simple message. The love of God is greater far.
may be seated. Would the ushers please come forward, please? It is now time to give back to those that are less unfortunate as we are. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for your blessings today as we come and give our tithes and our offerings to you, Lord. We pray that the blessings that you give us and the use of our hands will not only help you with your kingdom, Lord, but it will help us in our faith and build us in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In the way of announcements this morning, the ladies will meet this Tuesday in the uh, Sunday school class here behind the sanctuary, 9 o'clock. If you have a prayer request, please contact uh, uh, the office, or you may contact Miss Patsy Holland to be put on their list. Also, Bible study, I think, is going to be postponed for the month of June. We will start at a later date, and that will be announced sometime at the end of June. Uh, the almshouse, as always, they are so much in need of uh, non-perishable items. And again, ladies, please, if you have anything in your closets that you're, or pantries that you're not going to be using, it would be great help to someone that can use those items. Uh, baptism, if you need uh, baptism, please contact Pastor Harrison for that information. He will get with you, set up a class, and, and tell you what needs to be done for that to be conducted. The stained glass windows, uh, there will be so, uh, on sale, and I'm going to repeat what Gerald has said many times before. If you would like one of the stained glass windows that's in the old sanctuary next door, Please see Wanda in the office, and they are $25 for each pane, and if you would like a full sash, which is six panes, that is $200. And see uh, Wanda over in the office, and she, they have a sheet, a layout of each pane in the old sanctuary, and if you have a uh, one that you would like, you can pick that one if it's available, and she will uh, give you the information on that. Also... Are there any other announcements? Yes, uh, we didn't have the cookout yesterday because of the weather. We're going to try to reschedule to this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. And if the weather don't permit, then we'll just have hot dog and hamburgers out of the church. Oh. Are there anything else? If not, please stand for the benediction. First, I want to. Let's give the Lord praise and thanks for the great message of Also, I need to mention uh, how and the Shannon did so much work to pull this off and with the youth, and it didn't go well because of the weather. We want to thank you for the hard work that, and the sacrifice you made and your family made to pull this off. Will you now receive the benediction? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. May you go in his peace. May his peace radiate throughout your entire being. May you live as people of peace. And the God of peace will always be with you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>